All right, so I've had to call a bunch of peers to make sure that these prediction calculations are correct. The prediction calculations is going to be for the Zen 3 Plus refresh from AMD when mining Raptorium. Specifically, it's going to be pinpointing the improvements in L3 cache on the refresh and then taking into account, of course, the difference that each processor core has on the hash rate as well. We're going to get into the numbers and make our predictions right after a word from today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is myself. To support the channel, click the join button below the video and you will get access to our privately hosted rocket chat. Selecting the 199 option will get you access and after that you need to head over to the membership tab, scroll down and expand out your membership perks. Find the section for connecting on social media and in that section, there will be a secret registration URL to join Rocket Chat, where you can sign up to enjoy talking with other cryptocurrency enthusiasts and miners without spammers, scammers, or bots. Welcome back. So today we are basing this off of an article from Hot Hardware, so let's hop into that. The title is AMD Stacked 3D Vcache Could Be Headed to Gaming GPUs After Zen 3 Ryzen Refresh. Now, the reason we picked this article is because it has more details for specifically the Zen 3 Ryzen Refresh. That being said, it is important to note that there is new technology coming to the Radeon series GPUs. We saw a little bit of a hint of it with Infinity Cache on the Radeon 6000 series. And as you all know, the 6000 series is not necessarily great for mining until you get to the lower end cards. That is because AMD compensated for the memory bandwidth issues that it has. You still utilizing GDDR6 as opposed to upgrading the GDDR6 X like Nvidia has by implementing Infinity Cache. So what this article is covering a little bit is how AMD is going to be implementing the technology 3D Vcache that they are going to be using with the Ryzen refresh on the GPUs, but we'll cover that in a later video. To make sure you don't miss that, hit the notification bell, subscribe button, and that like button so that the YouTube algorithm will basically let you know when that video is available. Let's go ahead and get into the details though for, of course, the Zen 3 processors. All right, so AMD's Zen 2 and Zen 3 processor cores stack up pretty well against Intel's finest, largely thanks to the use of the secret weapon massive last level caches. The company's Radeon arm pulled the same trick calling it Infinity Cache to allow its recent Radeons to compete with Mean Green on performance despite coming strapped with relatively puny memory interfaces as we discussed. Soon AMD's doubling down on that play with refreshed Ryzen CPUs bearing 3D stacked cache known to date as 3D Vcache. The concept is simple, AMD is literally piling on extra last level cache using vertically stacked dice. The upcoming Zen 3 Plus refresh will be fundamentally the same CPUs as in the extent of Ryzen 5000 series, just with each eight core complex die CCD bearing an extra 64 megabytes of cache on top for 96 megabytes of cache on a single CCD part and a whopping 192 megabytes of cache on the dual CCD parts. Now, if you guys aren't aware, the L3 cache impacts Raptorium mining significantly. And we're gonna go ahead and show you guys the calculations that I did to basically figure out how much 32 megabytes of cache impacts the mining for, of course, Raptorium. And then we're gonna go ahead and figure out what that means for the refresh. Now we know from what they're saying here, uh, the rest of the line is going to remain the same. So the amount of cores on a die, and of course, presumably the core clock speed. So the only thing that would we don't really know at this point is if we're gonna see DDR5 on the refresh, which I would assume would be coming, and the importance of, of course, the memory speed when mining as well. So mileage may vary. We're gonna be going based off of stock clocks, utilizing the Raptorium mining hash rate calculator. So we aren't taking into account things like the PBO modifications we did or all core overclocks. We have to use stock numbers to basically extrapolate out the percentage change that we're gonna see based on the cache. So let's go ahead and hop into it. 
going back to the desktop here and hitting up the calculator. We know that the 5950X and the 5900X both have 64 megabytes of L3 cache. We do also know that the 5900X is a six core 12 thread processor, while the 5950X is an eight core 12 thread processor, meaning that we have four more threads total on the 5950X. So what we want to do at this point is basically determine the difference in hash rate, the percent difference, in hash rate between the cores. So we need to know how much of a percent difference there is in the cores to basically compensate for that when we're doing our calculations for how much cash affects it. So what we're gonna do is we're going to get the hash rate for the 5950X, which is going to be 4,247. We're gonna throw that into our percent calculator over here. Basically, we need to know what the percentage of the 5950X is of the or the 5900x is of the 5950x so we're going to take the 3557 hash a second and we're going to plug that into here and we're going to calculate out the percent difference in these two now as you can see it's 83 percent difference between the 5900x and the 5950x so what do we know from that well we know that we have essentially a 16 percent a 16.3 percent to be exact, or more exact, we could go even further, but let's just say a 16% difference in based off of the amount of cores on the processor, which means per thread, we're looking at a 4% change, right? Four more threads on the 5950X. And this is gonna help us essentially calculate out how much the L3 cache is impacting it. Obviously not much of a difference in threads. You would expect more if it was a thread heavy algorithm, right? Or a set of he thread heavy algorithms. So at this point, what we need to do is find a 32 megabyte of cache and then determine the difference in for every 32 megabytes of cache on the processor. So to do that, we want to know what the hash rate of the 5800X is, which is 2,111. That's quite a bit different than the 3,557, of course. And then we also know that the 5800X is basically going to have four less threads than the 5900X. So basically what we're gonna do now is we are going to take the 2111 and calculate out the percent difference here. Now what we can see is we have a 60%, we have 60% of the hash rate of the 5900X on the 5800X. And we need to compensate, of course, for now the core percentage change, which is going to be that 16%. So we're going to take the 59% and we're going to subtract the 16%, which leaves us with a 43% change. And so we know that for every 32 megabytes of cache, we have basically a 43% change in hash rate. So now we can go ahead and determine the difference at the top for essentially what the top line 5950X refresh would be hashing at. And so to do this, all we really need to do is figure out how much more cash it's gonna have, which is gonna be 300%, right? And actually, to determine this even further, we need to do it by 32 megabytes of cache because we only calculated the difference in hash rate for an additional 32 megabytes of cache. So to do this, it can get a little bit more complicated, but just try to track with me here. You would take the 192 megabytes of cache and subtract the 64 megabytes of cache on the 5950X, which would leave you with 128 megabytes of cache and then if you divided that by the 32 megabytes of cache, you would end up with basically the number four, which means that we would need to essentially take this 43% and multiply it times four to get the percent change that we wanna see. So we're gonna take four and multiply that times the 43, and we end up with 172%, right? And so now we need to get the hash rate for the 5950X right here. And then we're just gonna go ahead and take that out and we're going to paste it on over and calculate that out. And you would have an increase of 7,304 hash a second. So at this point, we just have to add the 7,304 with the 4,247. So that number, 
which I have a calculator over here for, would be 11,551. So now we can go back to the calculator. We can clear out the 5950X, set a custom value, and put in the 11,551 and calculate that out. And what you would see is for the refresh of the 5950X, you would have a daily gross estimated daily return of $6.28 while mining Raptorium if the difficulty and the price of Raptorium remain the same uh, at the launch, which is highly unlikely, but you will still know what the hash rate is going to be, right? Now I can verify this as well even further because if we were just basing this off of the amount of cash and we just went 300% of the hash rate, you would take that 4211, right? Or 4247, right? And multiply that times three. That would be 12,741. So because we're under that, at the 11,551, we know that we are compensating for the amount of cores or the core differences or the core impact, I suppose, and basically only calculating the impact of the L3 cache. Once again, other things that can impact this that you need to take into consideration is going to be memory speed, memory latency, that sort of thing. And then of course the, the core clock, which could of course change, but doesn't look like it's going to at this point. We can also do this with of course the 5600X but it's going to be a little bit different because if we take a look at the 5600X, we only have 64 megabytes of cache extra. So what would that look like in a percent calculator? Well, we know that it was 43% and we know that we essentially have two more sets of 32. So it would be 43 times two, which is 86%. So we know it would be 86% of a 5600X Let's go ahead and clear the custom value here, which would be 1699 hash a second. We'll throw that into here. So we would add the 1461 plus the 1699, and that would come out to a hash rate of 3160 hash a second or somewhere around there, which isn't gonna be near as good, but it's still, for a 65 watt part, going to be significantly better than a 5800X currently right? So that one would be $1.70 a day or somewhere thereabouts. Now we can verify this as well because if we did the 1699 times three, it would be quite a bit more. It was a 5,097. So it definitely is a scaling thing and it gets way higher as we go further up. Now my math could be flawed. I did try to call and verify with a few people that I was thinking about this correctly because I did second guess myself and we have re-recorded re this four times now as I have adjusted out my math and calculations to make sure that I'm getting as close as possible to the actual number that will happen when we see the launch of Zen 3. Now we have mentioned, of course, everything that could change there. Is the cache confirmed? Are we sure that the 3DV cache is going to basically function exactly the same as traditional L3 cache? You know, well, I'm not exactly sure because obviously the infinity cache is not directly affecting the memory bandwidth when mining on those other algorithms. And there's probably support that the miners will have to add in for the refresh, possibly. Unless it's just straight L3 cache and it's detected and it pops right off, in which case we should be good to go. Either way, I think this was an exciting and fun video to play around with. I hope you guys enjoyed the video as well. And feel free to point out any mistakes that I made in the comment section below and make your own predictions for the hash rate of the top end Ryzen refresh CPU, that being the 5950X with a presumed 192 megabytes of L3 cache. I'll see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to see more. Also, you can check out this playlist for more content talking about cryptocurrency.